A hot dog and fries is a pretty classic combination, but it becomes a crazy f***ing combination when it's a sour cream with garlic sauce, hot dog, and garlic fries. Today, it's all about the garlic. Yeah, garlic in both things today is crazy delicious. How could you not like this? Are there people, okay, let's, a poll question. Are there people in your life that do not like garlic? Not mine. No, not yours. Should we word it like that? Or do you, do you like garlic in your food? Yes or no? And part of me feels like we should take all the no's and unsubscribe them. <laughs> okay, maybe that's a little mean. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if you hate garlic, maybe it's because it's been, it's, it's been abused on you. It's been overused on you and scaled back, but a little bit, a tiny little bit. Even if you don't like it, it's going to make your shit better. I promise that. But the hot dog part is the easy part of this. The still easy, but slightly more complicated part are the fries that we're making ourselves. Look, it's the return of the, the, what's that called? It's the return of the deep fryer. I said when we made the um, fish stick burrito, which by the way, if you've not made or watched, you're crazy because it was so good. I promised when we made the fish stick burrito, we we're doing two things. This is the second thing with the deep fryer. And fries will be part of it. We peel, we slice, we deep fry. It's that simple. And here's how we start. One big ass russet potato. I like to take the ends off and then use a peeler to take care of this. And when you've got it peeled all the way around, and no, we don't want this. They call that an eye or something. It's just a bruised thing that I hate. Some of these little guys are okay. But clean it up as best you can. And then when you've got it like this, you have to decide what size do you want. Do you want thick ones? Do you want thin ones? Do you want restaurant style? Do you, you know, whatever. So take this guy off. What are we feeling? I'm feeling thin. We good with that? Yeah. Okay, fine. So we like this, and then we do this. So these are going to be our fries. Everybody's happy with this, right? Look, if you were going to do just a shit ton of them, once you cut them, you would put them in water so they wouldn't brown. But we're going to do not too many, so our timing will be fine. And our oil is fine, so... Actually, we're freaking ready to go. So we take this new pile, we stack it up, and then we make fries out of it like that. These guys are going to go in our basket. Let's go. So based on their size, I think we'll call them McDonald's style fries. My oil is at 325 degrees. We're gonna deep fry them twice for optimum perfectness. And in they go. With freshly cut fries, there's the potential they stick together. So when you put them in, just give them a little love to separate. And they're gonna get about uh, three minutes-ish here. We're not trying to make them golden brown. We're just trying to make them very light brown. It's the second frying at a higher temperature that will bring all the magic. And while that's happening, we can prep our uh, hot dog nonsense. A little shake never hurts halfway through. And after about three minutes or so, when it's just starting to get some color on it, we take it out, we let the oil drip off, we increase the temperature to 375. We let it heat up. We continue. We'll come back to these. Point out something. I was asked about this because on a recent video, we put a link to 
a deep fryer that I don't know is exactly this one. But when I went to look for it the other day, this is a Cuisinart. I couldn't find this model as a Cuisinart, but I could find the virtually exact same thing, but it said wearing. It didn't say Cuisinart. So we'll link to that. Just know it does the same thing. And we're very happy with it. Next, we need some garlic for two things. One in the sour cream sauce for the uh, dog. Sour cream hot dogs. Holy shit, just you wait. And for the garlic fries. So I have my garlic press here and I almost did that like a cowboy, right? Should I try that again? That was, that was not like a cow, we just forget it. So I need a bunch of garlic. We'll just squeeze this up. You are a badass cowboy. Uh, uh, there we go. All right. It's a temperature. We get it. We get it. So I probably want a couple cloves for each. So I'll do like four. Great. And our sour cream. I mean, looking over the top like a, like a 90 year old librarian. Our sour cream sauce is next. I feel like I look really old like that. Do I look really old like that? Come up with the right answer quick or I'm going to be no. mad at you. Lying sack of <laughs> And this silly little sauce we'll start with. Sour cream. And then of course it gets some of the garlic we just crushed. Some parsley. Little salt and pepper. Tiny squeeze of avocado oil. And we mix. I smell the garlic from here. I smell the garlic from here. We're standing right beside each other. No, you know no, say it, right? say it. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I smell the garlic from here. Sour cream? Innocent looking sour cream on the outside? Oh no. That's going to be ridiculous. Now, we cut a little red onion. A red onion, we'll cut in half. And then we'll peel it. So I cut a little strip this way and peel off this outside. Of course, why, why should it be made easy for me? Why? Why? Make me struggle. Son of a biatch. Come on, man. Oh, I'm so <sighs> All right, this is F you red onion. Why well, you gotta be so difficult? Here's my guy. But I want these beautiful little thin strips, so I'm gonna take this back end off, and then I'm gonna cut this way. Because I want stuff like this. I want those pretty little pieces. And that's enough, we'll just break them up. Look how pretty those are, right? Put them in a little bowl. And after the red onion, little green onion. It's a double onion dog. Boy, is it going to be good. You know, there was a comment about those knife lines. Somebody was asking about the cutting board if it holds up really well because they see those lines as we're cutting. and then These go, lines? Yeah, and then the next episode, they say that they're gone. Well, here, close up on those and tell me if they go away when I do this. Is that what they mean? I mean, they're still there. I think if this dries a bit. Mm -hmm. You'll see them, but but they kind of wear away. But look, this is a uh, this is wood. This is what you want to cut on. And and somebody asked, so this is a wood board, uh, and it's what you want to cut on. We've had this conversation before. In fact, somebody asked if this was metal because apparently in some shots it looks like it. No, it's not. You want to use wood. That's the thing. And I know people freak out thinking, oh, if I cut a piece of chicken or steak or something on wood, it's going to contaminate and I'm going to get sick and it's going to be terrible and I've ruined the board. Not true. Here's what is true. There have been many uh, universities and scientific institutions that have done studies on bacteria on different cutting surfaces. They'll take plastic and, 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 and I don't know what the other things are. I can't remember. But they, they put bacteria, they wipe bacteria. 
They make a cut, they wipe bacteria on the different cutting surfaces. Then they, they come back and they measure in five minutes and 30 minutes in an hour. And the first surface that the bacteria leaves completely is wood. And the reading that I did, and I'm not a scientist, and if you get sick, don't come to me, but the reading that I did said, look, bacteria needs moisture to survive. And on a wood board, when you make a cut, any moisture that's there evaporates much quicker. Oh boy. Much quicker. Did I really say that? Much quicker. You did. Okay, I know that's not a word. Please don't make too much fun of me. Much quicker. Much quicker than it does on, on composition materials and plastic and stuff like that. So get yourself some wood. I'm just going to cut this green onion a little smaller and then we can move on to the hot dogs. So just an extra little chop through. We'll make these to the size that I want. If you had any idea how much chopped green onion like this we go through at my restaurant, Not Not Tacos, you would be blown away. It goes on so many things. Put these guys in here. Now the hot dogs. And here's what I'm using. Natural casing, all beef, uncured hot dog. And look, we could just throw these on the grill or the flat top and start to cook them, but it's not what I like. I like to put little cuts in them, like this. All the way down, I mean, you know, this is a weird shaped one. It doesn't really have all the sides, so we'll just go kind of three sides worth. But what happens is we're gonna give these a quick little boil and they start to open up along these slits and they get badass looking, but they also get extra crispy when you then throw them on the flat top. Okay, there's one, let's do two. And you notice what's happening here. My knife is not going too far down, but it's going in beautifully. And why is that? Because it's sharp. Because it's sharp, thank you, Max. Max, you've been around long enough to know all this. And I preach all the time, folks, if you don't have a sharp knife, get a sharp knife. Take it and have it sharpened. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. And now these guys, just like they are, they go into some uh, simmering water for about three minutes. And in they go. And you'll see over the next uh, two, three minutes, the little slices will open up and they'll be ready for hot dog stage two. Okay, so you can see after about three-ish minutes, the slits have opened up. They're ready to be uh, finished on the flat top, but before we do, just a touch of oil. We'll go like this. I don't want them to stick. And it'll help with the browning, and then they come out, and on they go. Lovely. Wait till you see how gorgeous these guys are gonna be. Look, color already beginning. And since they're not gonna take very long, we might as well finish off our fries. The oil's now up to 375, and in they go. I love that sound, I love that smell. And let's look at the dogs. That. You're just trying to get this little touch of crisp all the way around. Amazing. We're almost there, Max. Maybe we should prep our bun. Buns, lovely, soft, gorgeous. Yes, of course you could serve the dog just in this, but why would you when you could add another layer of texture and flavor? And how are we gonna do that? Sam, you wanna know? Bitches, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna add a little butter, just a little, to the inside of these. Because why not? Because you only live once. Because I don't wanna be on my last day on this planet and, and have a, a, a dog that somebody's buttered the bun and I went, wait, what? You put butter on the bun? You mean I've been missing that deliciousness all these years? I'm not saying eat 75 hot dogs. I'm just saying when you have a hot dog, 
or a hamburger or a sandwich or something. Make it the best version you can. You feel me, I know you feel me. We're one with each other. Let's go, let's finish, come on. So before I throw those uh, buns on, can you just admire what has happened here? I mean, here's the deal. This is a crazy ass mother amazing hot dog. The people that just take them out of the package and boil them for two minutes and then throw them in a soft, uncrispy bun, they're just not trying at life. This is about making everything better. These little craggy crevices. Look at this. I mean, even if it didn't taste any better, look at it. It looks a thousand fucking times better. So do this. Now the buns will go on. I'm just gonna throw a little oil here because I really don't want these things to fucking burn up. And so tell me when you're ready. You know. I'm ready. Ah! Oh, Yikes! And the buns go on. And the buns, after a very little bit of time, are golden where you want them and ready to go. Max, are you ready? I'm ready. Can we dress these bitches up? You're just not going to respond, are you? Here we go. Oh, do you have any idea what's going to happen here? Do you? So this is our garlic sour cream. Right down the middle. Holy ass. If you could, if you could just smell this part, I've got the crispy buttered bun that I can smell. Now I've got this garlic sour cream that honestly, I just want a little bit more of here. And now, next, Max, let's go with the red onion, shall we? Mother fucker. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, what is happening here is on a whole nother hot dog level. I've done this hot dog before with one onion, the green one, with no garlic, and this is going to be stupendous. Hello, super dog. This guy comes in. <laughs> and then the second onion goes like this. And, and you're not being cheap, folks. I mean, come on. You got an onion dog, you got an onion dog. This is a double onion sour cream dog cooked better than pretty much any dog I've ever seen. And while those are waiting for somebody to throw them in their mouth and just chew the F out of them, let's finish our fries. So here they are. Let them, let them just drip for a second. I'm so anxious, you have no idea. They go to the bowl. Now, we finish them off. Okay, so here's what they get. They get salt, they get parsley, a little bit more. They get the garlic, they get a tiny shot of oil, that's it, and they get some Parmesan cheese. Oh, fine, a little bit more. And we mix. Oh my God, the smell, the crispiness. If you only knew what was going on here. Come on, let's plate this shit up, shall we? Our dogs, first. You have no idea the self-control that I'm displaying right now because I cannot wait for this. And then, our fries. Oh my gosh. And wait, then here's what you do. You get some of the extra parsley and the parm and the cheese, you just do that. I mean, is this insane or what? Perfect dogs, perfect. Crispy, crispy effing fries with the garlic, the parsley, the parm, please. And by the way, if it wasn't obvious, July 4th is right around the freaking corner. And I don't need to paint a picture for you, but I got an idea of what would be amazing on July 4th. Jelly reminds me. We also have July 1st coming up. That would be a nod to our Canadian fans, who, by the way, have been commenting and emailing like crazy. All right, so I guess you'd have a fry first, right? Oh, the garlic. Crunch. Double fried. <laughs> that was a little piggish. But, so worth it. Mm. 
You don't want to make your own fries, don't. But just do all the rest of this nonsense to it. And now that. The super crispy little cuts in there. Garlic, sour cream underneath. Red onion, green onion. Holy sh**. Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. Look, 